Okay, testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm going to give all the answers. Got to make sure it works. Not too loud, too quiet. All right, not all the answers. That was just the test, but some of the answers. We have various problems, right? Like we have an energy problem. We have a crime problem. We have a problem with war. We have a problem with democracy. Our democracy isn't working right, like the mathematics. We could debate these, but I'd be proven right in the end, so for the sake of argument. And then we have, a, some say, a population problem. I would say more of an issue. So, okay, which one do you want to start with? Uh, democracy. Okay, the democracy is this thing where the way the math works for our democracy, we tend to have this unstable 51% rules, and then the, it's the other one's 51%. To solve that, we need two things. Two things. I, I don't know which is more important. We need instant runoff voting, and we need public campaign financing. That's what we need. Public campaign financing. Which sort of means you don't need financing. You just put yourself on, you know, like C-SPAN. C-SPAN would carry the debates and decide. And you have to have a system, you know, not 100 people can all get an equal system. But, you know, there's a lot of mathematics that you could use for tournaments and stuff. And if you mix it with instant runoff voting or some Condorcet style voting, you would solve this problem. Our population and overpopulation problem. I've often said that, you know, I think if we're lucky, we're going to stop at 10 billion. That's what Hans Rosling also says, 10 billion. And uh, how do you reduce your population growth so that it levels off at hopefully 10, you know, 12 billion? Well, there's actually two statistics. I could prove this to you later. Um, one, child mortality. Places where child mortality is high, a birth rate is high. Just a fact. I, I'll prove it to you later. And then the other thing, of course, is child labor. So you have to make it, if, if, if people are losing a lot of kids, they'll have all that many more kids. The fastest growing places are where there's high child mortality. Where children die before 15, people tend to think you, they just plan to have a lot of kids and then in child labor also if people need to have kids as family workers uh, then they'll have more kids this is provable you can see in the history of the last two or three hundred years how this works things like religion and stuff like that that look like they're the reason or not the reason it's a symptom crime well, first of all, crime is related to income per capita. It's pretty directly related to that. That's obvious. Uh, though not all crime. For example, the United States is like one of the murder capitals of the world. Like, just, you know, I don't know, seven plus times more than a place like Bhutan or something. And then the other reason, less direct, is mental health. If, uh, if there's enough money so people have no profit in crime then you're left with the people that do crime because of mental health issues and uh, so that's the other crime issue solution answer uh, energy well I just want to say I do believe in multiple source I have to point that out because I also have a particular source I think we need to explore and that is is the over 50 percent solution it's the 80 percent solution which is liquid salt reactors I've been saying a lot about thorium or maybe not a lot, but I've been talking about how I like thorium, but it's not actually the thorium that is the coolest part. The part is a liquid salt reactor, which is a safer way even to have a uranium plant, but thorium is safer still. Now, there's other kinds of uh, nuclear reactor driven by neutron beams and pulsed uh, systems that might even be safer still, and I do think this the fuel in this is so cheap that we need to focus in on what is cheap to build engineering wise that kid that made the fusion reactor in his uh, garage has an idea for a 50,000 uh, home uh, uh, liquid reactor which he wants to burn old uh, nuclear missile material but it could also burn thorium 
that would come with 30 years of fuel. You just bury it near 50,000 homes and boom, pretty safe and hard to, you know, terrorize and the rest. And then finally, I guess we have war. Now, the war is a difficult thing because war is the most obvious one. What do we need to do to stop having war? I don't know. It's so obvious. I think that it's a cost realization. War is expensive. If you, let's, let's look this up. I didn't look this up in advance. But, um, you know, we spent a lot on war. If people just st stopped wanting to go to war, like people did not reward politicians that tried to go to war, then uh, it would stop. So, for example, cost of Iraq war, I'll type in. And then uh, population of U.S. All right? You get it what I'm going to do. Okay, cost of war. Spin. The first one that wasn't a paid for was nationalpriorities.org. I don't know. I'm just going to take the first numbers. Cost of the war in Iraq. Oh, it's still racking up. So, according to the site. So, let's see. That's thousands. That's hundred thousands. That's millions. That's billions. So, it says 815 billion. So, uh, 815 billion uh, dollars divided by the number of people in the United States, which is 314 million. So let's do that. Divided by 314 million. So that means it's 24 $2,600 per person in the United States, the cost of the Iraq war. So if you asked, and that's for every person and child. So for families, that's more like, you know, $7,500 to $10,000. So um, if you asked everybody, would you like to have, you know, uh, a set of family jet skis or a hot tub and and uh, savings or you know or would you rather kill Iraqis well I think there might be you know a possible cost realization there to make people not so stupid about it seriously $2,600 I spent on the Iraq war just on myself. And then I have a family, so it's more like, you know, the 10000 I spent $10,000 on the Iraq war. I did not get my money's worth, okay? I would have rather had a Vespa. Uh, 